you have come through the fire. All right. yeah. All right. yeah. All right. If you have been in the crucible right. for preaching God's word, right. it really doesn't matter anymore because you've already come through the fire. To Brother Doss and his lectureship co-laborers, for all that we have splendidly enjoyed and still enjoy, and to all of my beloved brethren, sisters in Christ, who have enriched my life this week Amen. by your presentations and by the joy of our association, the fellowship which we have experienced. Amen. I thank God for you. Amen. To those who are with me on the dais, yeah. my good friends, my brothers, and all of you, I thank God for you. Thank God for the privilege of being a part of this South Florida contingent who also came from down South Florida way to the Bay Area, the Spider Brothers, Brother Robert Holt, yeah. Brother Bernard Smith, yeah. Brother and Sister Cross, whom we work with and have the blessing of close association on a regular basis, we appreciate their companionship in the work of the Lord. Permit me to introduce my sweetheart of 44 years. Yes, sir. Sister White, yeah, would you just stand for those of you who do not know her? This is my beloved wife, in whom I am well pleased.
seriously speaking. <laughs> Just as the final days of this 20th century cascades to its climatic conclusion, so does the final moments of this 26th annual Southeastern Lectureship approaches its final benediction. My assigned topic tonight is a memorial drink for a mighty man. A memorial drink for mighty men. The text that was assigned was from the second book of Samuel, chapter 23. And I'd like to read uh, beginning at verse 14 through 17 as a point of demarcation where the Bible reads, and David was then in the hole. And the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem. Uh, that was by the gate, and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink of it. These things did these three mighty men. Wow. A memorial drink for mighty men. Tonight we need to be aware that the whole focus of this lectureship theme, whether we take it parabolically, Metaphorically, allegorically, symbolically, physically, spiritually, hermeneutically, exegetically, whether we take it parabolically, paradoxically, or realistically, it is just to make us to hear and to understand that Jesus, Mary's baby, the Christ of God, is the fountainhead and only true potentate and divine source of eternal life. That's all this theme is. And all of those who spoke before me were pressing the point that only Jesus is the answer. He is the only source to eternal life. So however we look at it, however we look at it, we need to tell the story. We have an obligation to share this good news. And if not somebody's blood yeah. just might be required at our hands. But this is good news. And therefore we are not mind telling good news. But, but you know in our human condition. Uh, in our fallen state. The devil still bothers with us and and causes us some time to, 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 to get more fun and, and more enjoyment out of sharing bad news than good news. You turn on your TV every evening or every morning. Good morning, good morning America. A good evening. And then after they say good morning or good evening, now there's a bombing in Russia. There is war in Poland. Uh, 50 people got killed in the earthquake. Nine folk got stabbed. Some crazy one went into a school and shot all the teachers. I, I mean, good evening and then all the bad news. 
Sometimes when I hear it, I don't want to watch TV no more. So much bad news. And sometimes we, we, we like to tell bad news ourselves. We don't need to be like the man. Who saw his friend coming out of the movie with the lady that wasn't his wife? His friend ran over to him and pulled out a five dollar bill and shoved it in his hand and say, take this, Eric. Say, don't tell. Say, 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 don't tell. Take this five dollars, don't tell. Eric took the five dollars and didn't tell. Two weeks later, Eric came back with the five dollars in his hand and shoved it in his friend's hand and says, here, take this five dollars. He said, no, I gave it to you. He says, take it back. He says, why do you want me to take it back? Eric said, I just got to tell somebody. <laughs> but, but we need to tell the good news about the salvation of Jesus Christ. A memorial drink for a mighty man. Memorial something that is has lasting significance something of importance something that is impressive an unforgettable event thought or happening or some other action drink if we look at the word drink in the sense of the noun it is a liquid a food of refreshing juice Water, something that is easily swallowed without chewing. Wow. Yeah. Drink also in the form of a bird is to take inside of our bodies through the mouth the same kind of liquid. Or, in another sense, drink in also implies taking things into our minds. Yeah. You know, when our children see certain things on TV or if you give them unusual and free access to the internet without looking to see what they're seeing, many times they get on the pornography uh, channel on the internet and, and they are drinking in to their mind through the eyes and through the ears. All of these things which will, like a computer, what goes in one day certainly will come out to drink. And then mighty, which means simply very great or powerful and, and, and mighty men, also including mighty women in the generic sense. Mighty, I, I am reminded of what uh, the Bible says in 2 Samuel about King Saul uh, when he came to the end of his reign when it was time for him to give up the kingdom and he got killed out in Gilboa in a great battle. Yeah. And then the record is, oh, how the mighty yeah. Yeah. have fallen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm reminded of what the record is in the 24th chapter of the book of the Psalms when it said when Jesus went back to heaven, uh, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and even lift them up the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. Mighty. The second chapter of the book of Acts, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing, mighty new end. And so we see that mighty here simply means powerful, can be ascribed to anyone or anything. And we're talking about mighty men. Mighty men can be good men. Mighty men can be bad men. In the book of Revelation chapter 6 and 15, when the Lord God in kaleidoscopic wonder opened heaven up, to John while he was out on the Isle of Patmos. And all of it split in glory. John looked up and he saw some seals being opened on the great book. And then he saw uh, when the stars fell from heaven like a fig tree casting off on timely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. He said, and I saw the kings of the earth and the chief men and the captains and the mighty men and the bond men and every free man running to the rocks 
and to the mountains and crying, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sitteth on the throne for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand. We got some mighty men here running from God in the last day won't be saved. But the focus of our lesson tonight a mighty men who are good men. Mighty men who are Christians. Mighty men who in the old church that was in the wilderness. Mighty men who were God-fearing men just like David. Let us read tonight from the text in order that we might get a foundation as I uh, go into the exegesis of this lesson tonight. Good men. From 2 Samuel chapter 23, beginning at verse number 8. These are the names of the mighty men whom David had. And for this one verse, I, I switch over to the book of Chronicles chapter 11. Uh, because there is a uh, scribal error uh, and malfunction in the recording of this one particular verse. It's not wrong. It, it, it's just mis recorded here. And, and so it should read and uh, Jabeson, uh the Hapamite, uh, he sat in the chief seat among the captains and uh, he took up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo the Ammonite. One of the three mighty men with David when they defied the Philistines who were gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistine until his hand was weary and his hand clave unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day. And the people returned after him only to spoil. And after him was Shem. Yeah, the son of A.G., the yeah. Horrorite. Yeah. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where there was a piece of ground full of lentils. Yeah. And lentils was, in our term, barley, a type of cereal. Yeah. And the people fled from the Philistine. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistine. And the Lord wrought a great victory. Yeah. And three of the thirty chief went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in an hold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines, and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. 